Hey, JNM here with a new Blender 2.92 video about the new feature Geometry Nodes. As you might know, you can get the Blender experimental versions from this page, download and then scroll down to the Go Experimental download link. Here you can get Blender 2.92, the latest alpha, and here you can see the new features and changes. One of the features, the first one here, is Geometry Nodes. Well, here you can see a link to a manual and a blog post. The manual is alright, but not for getting started, I would say. And the blog post is, yeah, promising. I mean, it looks great and you can just click to get the full project. But of course, it is hard for beginners to understand how this is created. You see a lot of nodes in a completely new editor which is called the Geometry Node Editor. This one here. In this you have two groups, a group input and a group output on the other side, and other nodes in between to create the randomly scaled and rotated pebbles. But to understand this, I suggest to start from the scratch with a new project, delete the camera and the default cube, sorry mate, see you next time, and then we go ahead and add a plane for the terrain. For this I go to edit mode and press S and type in 4 to scale it up 4 times and then I right click and choose subdivide. I set the number of cuts to 40, that should be enough. Then I go to the look dev mode, ok and then to the material tab to add a simple material for the terrain. I call it matte ground for instance, set the color to a brown tone and increase the roughness a bit. Nothing fancy, just that we have something that can be used as a terrain. Nice, after that I'm going to add a texture here in the textures panel and for the type I select clouds. I will use this to define the surface of the terrain. I increase the size of the clouds a bit and for a higher contrast I add a color ramp. Bring the black and white a bit to the inside and I think we can go with that. Ok, then we go to the modifiers panel and add a displays modifier. You find it here in the deform section. For this I'm going to use the clouds texture then the plane already looks terrain-like, but I set the shading to smooth. Now we can play with the strength and the mid-level. I don't want to use values that are too extreme. And like in the Pebble sample project, I add another displace modifier, just to have some variation for the terrain. Again I play around with the mid-level and the strength, just set it as you like, and now we have a terrain. I make the scene world visible, which is black at the moment. So I'm going to add a light, for instance here an area light. Move and rotate it towards the terrain. And then I set the power to let's say 400. That looks better, then I increase the strength of the background just a tiny bit. And to make it look a bit more interesting, I enabled ambient occlusion and blue. Great, now it's time to add a stone, a so called pebble. For this, I use an icosphere. Go to edit mode and press S to scale it down. That's okay, and then I go to sculpt mode and use the line project to cut away some parts from the stone. Then I press G to activate the grab brush and modify the shape a bit. That's ok for the sake of this tutorial and then I switch again to object mode and go to the modifier tab to add a subdivision surface modifier.
Then I go to sculpt mode and again modify the shape a bit and then I call it done. Nice, now we can move this pebble a bit to the side because it is just a kind of template that we are going to instantiate multiple times using geometry nodes. Sorry for calling it pebble, now I know the word is pebble. And the next thing that we are going to add is a point cloud. I just add it to the scene. The size for it is not important. You see why in a moment. And then I drag out this window and select the geometry node editor. Okay, now I press new to create new geometry node groups. You see we have an input and an output group and I call this setup geometry nodes pebbles. The first thing that I'm going to add is an input parameter for the group input to define the number of pebbles that we are going to create. You find this in the node panel and by the way you can press the N key to open or close the sidebar. I press plus to add the input and I call it pebble count. You can set a default value, but I see we have to set it here in the modifier as well. I set it to 25. And the next thing we have to add is an object info node. I press Shift and A and search for object info. Here we have it. And for this you can define an object. For which I use the terrain object, the ground. Okay, and now have a look at this. I add another node, a point distribute. And then I connect the object info geometry output to the geometry input of the point distribute. And now have a look at the point cloud. The points are distributed over the terrain. Nice, then I connect the pebble count to the density input. And you see count is a bit misleading because the density means how many points you will have per square meter. Anyway, we have the distribution, now let's add some randomness. For this I add a random attribute node, move it between these two nodes and set the attribute to scale, because we are going to randomize the scale of the pebbles. The minimum I set to let's say 0.2 and the maximum to 0.65. These are just sample values that you can play around with. Then I press Shift and D to duplicate the random attribute node, move it to the right, it will be connected. And this I change from float to vector. The attribute I set to rotation, and you guess it, this is for randomizing the rotation of the pebbles. The minimum and maximum values are set from minus pi to pi. You know this math constant 3.141 and so on. Okay, we just see points, but we want to see pebbles, so we have to add another node, and this is a point instance. For the point instance, we have to set an object, and of course this is the pebbles object. And boom, here are the pebbles, with a randomized scale and rotation. Isn't that great? And of course you can change now all the parameters as you like, the scale, by the way, you can also animate these values. You see I change minimum and maximum. Or the rotation, if you like. And of course also the input parameter, in this case the density. It adjusts as well when I change the modifiers for the terrain. And you see this is all non-destructive. Alright, a last thing that I want to show you is the density attribute. At the moment it's empty, this means the whole mesh is taken into account for the distribution of points. But now I'm going to define a name for this that will match to a certain vertex group. 
To define the vertex group, I go to Edit Mode for the Terrain Mesh, press A to select all, then press the C key to activate Circle Selection, and hold the Shift key down to deselect some faces. Like that, then I go to the Object Data Properties and add a new Vertex Group and give it the same name as the one that we defined for the Density Attribute. Don't forget to press Assign and then you see that the pebbles are distributed only for the mesh parts that are assigned to the Vertex Group. Ok, and I think when we come back to the original project, the sample project for Geometry Nodes, you will understand now how this is created. The difference is that we have more than one pebble that is distributed over the terrain, so our setup is kind of duplicated and in the end we have three point instances for the different pebble objects that have to be joined by using the join geometry nodes. Ok, that's it again, I hope it was understandable and you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you have any questions then add these to the comments below. Join JNM as a member or be my patron. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and I see you in the next one.